What's going on YouTube, Bird here, and in today's video, we are going over the new weapon added into Fallout 76, the Soul Survivor. But before we get into the video, make sure you smash that like button the way the Fallout 76 can you can see this, and subscribe for more Fallout 76 content. Let's get into it. So to start off everything, the Brother of Steel has sent me to a few locations around the map, that way I can demonstrate how powerful this weapon is, and at the end of the video I'll be showing you the weapon, its mods, and the build that I'm using. With that being said though, the first targets on our list are a bunch of Blood Eagles. This weapon does really good against human targets, so why not uh, see what these guys are up to? Oh, Blood Eagles! I'm actually sneaking so they won't know I'm here. I gotta find them myself. There's one. Alright. Well, that's, that's not a good shot. There we go. 900 damage. Poor guy. Poor, poor guy. Who's playing the banjo? Look at that. Where's the banjo? Oh no, someone came and killed this guy already. How sad. Oh, blood eagles. I know I'm sneaking around and y'all can't find me, but how did they, did they sound the alarm? They did. I don't know how they found me, but they found me. We're not getting that sneak damage. That's okay. That's okay, we do not need it against these guys. Still don't know how they found me. Is there any more? Well, I might as well stand up then, right? Oh, Blood Eagles? Yeah, we got him. He's in here. He's in here. Sir, I'm gonna need you to freeze. I'm gonna- Put down the gun! Get away from me, doggy. Put down the gun! I had no choice. He didn't put down the gun. Well, the Blood Eagles didn't stand any chance against the sole survivor. Now, let's move on to our next targets. The next targets on my list that the brother of still want me to take down is a bunch of human cultists. That's right, we have vicious cultists in the wasteland and they're spreading all their nonsense and we need to put a stop to it. I think they're located in this little area though. And again, they found me. I guess my sneaking's not all there. I thought it was, I guess not. Excuse me guys, I'm gonna need you to die. Die. Any more? Oh yeah, I'm getting shot from behind. This is the dude that spotted me. Yep. He's like, there he is! There he is! I'll bring it on. Is that all you got, you vicious cultist? Weren't so vicious. Now I'm gonna come steal your Mothman eggs. After I do this, let's move on to our next target. The next targets on my list that the brother still want me to take down are the vicious super mutants of West Tech. And the reason the Brotherhood want me to take these guys down so I can show you that this gun isn't just good against humans. Though if you're running it, you are probably going to be fighting the cultists, PvP, or something like that. I would not recommend fighting anything other than that. But if you get into a predicament to where you have to use this gun against other enemies like super mutants, super mutant behemoths, you'll be good to go. Don't sweat it. This is a solid gun altogether, as you can see. Let me find these guys. But this is an assassin's lever action, so I would be using it for PvP mostly if I was you. Go to the workshops, snipe some guys out, have some fun. But if you're not into PvP, definitely go go kill your cultists. Go kill your cultists, go kill your blood eagles, your raiders, whatever. Goodbye, machine. But as you can see, this gun can also tear through some super mutants. Now let's move on to our next target. The next target on my list that the brother is still want me to take down is a very vicious super mutant behemoth that goes by the name Laura Crow. And there she is. All mean and vicious and screaming and ready to go. So I'm just gonna, oh, Laura Crow is a legendary super mutant behemoth. So, be very careful. Of course, this gun is really good outside of VADs, so that's why I'm demonstrating it like this. But, it's gonna be way better in VADs. Lord Craft is getting a little bit too close. Okay, Lord Craft. Just chill out. Just relax. Holy crap. Just gonna have to. Still cautious. Still cautious. Reload. Goodbye, Lord Craft. You have no idea. I've shot her in the eyes. She's blind. She stands. She's like, what's going on? What's going on? I do wish this was a quad, though, because then I wouldn't be reloading every five seconds. As long as she doesn't notice me. Here we go. And just like that. After 10 minutes of fighting Lorecroft, 
because her defense was one million, she stands no chance and is no more. Now, let's get into the gun, the build I'm using, and the weapons mods. Over in the weapon, this is it. This is the legendary lever action rifle, Soul Survivor. This weapon is just like the unstoppable monster and the medical malpractice. It was only formally obtainable through our old survival mode, which is no longer. So the only way you can obtain this weapon now is through the daily ops. Through the daily ops, you have a chance for this plan to drop and once you have the plan to this weapon, you can craft as many as you would like. But the main legendary effect for this is the assassin's effect, which is a plus 50% of damage to humans, has a plus 50 damage resistance while aiming, and has a plus 25% of damage while aiming. Now as you can see, this gun isn't meant for VATS, though I do recommend you building a VATS build for it, I'll be showing you mine. The reason being is because it works way better in VATS, and with all of those other perks, you can also use it not in VATS, so you get the best of both worlds. Now the cool thing about this is the name for this weapon, the Soul Survivor, is the main protagonist in Fallout 4. A little easter egg there. Now let's look at this skin. The skin is absolutely beautiful and super unique to this weapon. It says this is not the end right there. It has a couple knife scratches, a little X, a couple, what is that, like three or looks like two and an arrow in between. I don't even know what that is. Then we also have all of our kill markings. There's 58 in total on this gun, which is very, very deadly. We're going to add some more to there. The mods I decided to use for the gun, though, is the hardened receiver, stabilized long barrel, Forceful Stock, Reflex Sight to Dot, Suppressor, and if you have a skin for the lever action, you can throw it on there. Though I definitely do not recommend it because this is a beautiful weapon. Now, let's get into the build that I was using. Over in the build, I'm not going to go in depth in my legendary perk cards or my base stats, but these are all the normal perk cards that make up the build. Starting off in strength, we have 6, and this is so I can have Traveling Pharmacy maxed out. I personally do carry 10 to Kim's on me, so this card is necessary. Then we have a blocker maxed out. Take 45% to less damage from your opponent's melee attacks. Over in perception, we have 15, and this is so we can have all the rifleman perk cards to get the max amount of damage out of this build. We have tank killer maxed out. Your rifles and pistols ignore 36% armor and have a 9% chance to stagger. We have sniper at two stars. Gain improved control and hold your breath for 50% longer while aiming down scopes. Now this card isn't necessary, but it is pretty fun to use when using a sniper build. Then we also have Concentrated Fire at 1 star, and this is so we can target the heads or the limb. Over in Endurance, we have 9, and this is so we can have a Ghoulish maxed out. Radiation now regenerates even more of your lost health. We have Admantium Skeleton at 2 stars. Your limb damage is now reduced by 60%. We have Fireproof maxed out. Take 45% to less damage from explosions and flame attacks. Then we have Radicule at 1 star. The greater the rads, the greater the strength, a max plus 5 to strength. Over in Charisma, we have 7, and this is so we can have a Lone Wonder maxed out. When adventuring alone, take 20% to less damage and gain 30% AP regain. Then we have Tenderizer maxed out. Make your target receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. Over in Intelligence, we have 3, and this is so we can have Nerd Rage maxed out. While below 20% health, gain 40 damage resist, 20% of damage, and 15% AP regain. Over in Agility, we have 12, and this is so we can have Action Boy maxed out. Action points regenerate 45% faster. We have Covert Operative maxed out. Your ranged sneak attacks deal 2.5 times the normal damage. We have Escape Artist maxed out. Sneak to lose enemies, and running no longer affects stealth. We have Adrenaline maxed out, gain a 10% max 60% of damage for 30 seconds per kill, duration refreshes with kills. Over in Luck we have 14 and this is so we can have Bloody Mess maxed out, 15% bonus damage means enemies may explode in a glory red pace. We have Tormentor maxed out, your rifle attacks have a 15% chance of crippling a limb. We have Grim Reaper Sprint at 1 star. Any kill in VATS has a 15% chance to restore all action points. We have better criticals maxed out. VATS criticals now do a plus 40% of damage. We have 4 leaf clover at 2 stars. Each hit in VATS has a better chance to fill your critical meter. Then of course we have starch genes maxed out. You'll never mutate from RADS and right away will never cure your mutations. 
But this is the Rifleman build. I told you I definitely recommend you using a VATS Rifleman build whenever you're using this gun because it allows you to use the gun in VATS and not in VATS. But this is definitely the build that I use for the Soul Survivor, the Soul Survivor itself, its mods. And guys, if you enjoy the Fault 76 content and you want to see more, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe for more Fault 76 content, and guys, I shall see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.